رب العالمين وبه نستعين إنه خير ناصر ومعين الصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين شفيع المذنبين رحمة للعالمين سيدنا ونبينا وشفي ذنوبنا وحبيب قلوبنا وطبيب نفوسنا الذي سمي في السماء بأحمد وفي الأرضين بأب القاسم المصطفى محمد ثم الصلاة والسلام على أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعسومين صلوات الله عليهم أجمعين ولعنة الله على أعدائهم ومنكر فضائلهم وغاس بحقوقهم من الأولين والآخرين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله تبارك وتعالى في كتابه المجيد وكلامه الكريم وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سبحان الذي يصرى بأبده ليلا من المسجد الحرام إلى المسجد الأقصى الذي باركنا حوله لنريه من آياتنا إنه هو السميع المسير آمنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم سلوا على محمد وآل محمد The 27th day of holy month of Rajab is a great day The two occasions collided together On one hand you have got the mab'ath of Rasulullah When we say mab'ath we mean that Rasulullah attained the prophethood on this day. However, Rasulullah was a prophet even before his birth. When Rasulullah's nur was already there, he was a prophet. But then officially he got risalat, officially he got prophethood. And that is why we say, Yawme Mab'ath, when he was 40 years of age. And when Jibreel, I mean, descended, he came to Rasulullah and he said, and we all know, at the cave of Hira. When Jibreel Amin comes and he says, Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alak, Iqra wa rabbuka al-akram, alladhi allama bil-qalam, allama al-insan, ma'alam ya'alam. The first five verses of Surah Alaq were revealed to the Holy Prophet of Islam. And then the verses stopped for three years. The very first five verses were of Surah Alaq. When Rasulullah was in the cave of Hira. And that was on the 27th day of the holy month of Rajab. This is one occasion. The birth of Islam. The birth of Islam was the day of Mi'raj. Indeed, it's a great Eid. It's a festival. It's a very great day. Yawm, Yawm al -Mab'ath. And on the other hand, 27th night of Rajab, Rasulullah went to Mi'raj. So you've got two occasions together. Yawm al -Mab'ath. The attainment of Risalat of Rasulullah, prophethood. On the other hand, Rasulullah went to Mi'raj. What is Mi'raj? Mi'raj is ascension. So Rasulullah ascended towards the heavens. And Quran says about it, the, 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 the verse which I recited at the beginning of my talk, Subhanallah asra bi abdihi laylam min al masjid al haram il al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu li nuriyahu min ayatina. Innahu huwa samiyul basir. So you've got two occasions together. Rasulullah went to the heavens. Rasulullah attained his prophethood. When these two occasions come on 27th day of Rajab, thus 27th day of Rajab becomes a very great day. It becomes a, a day of festival. To fast on that day is equivalent to 70 years of fasting. So tomorrow, if a mu'min fasts, one day, fasting of one day on the day of Mi'raj is equivalent to 70 years of fasting. Mi'raj, it is an amazing event in the life of Rasulullah. And it is indisputable event. No one has refuted it. They have, they have denied in different sense. Other schools of thought believe that Rasulullah 
did not go physically to Mi'raj. They say that Rasulullah went spiritually in a dream. He slept he, and he was shown this vision. However, we believe as far as Shia Islamic thought is concerned, we believe that no, Rasulullah went physically. And then Ayatollah Nasir Makarim Shirazi in his Tafsir and Namuna underneath this verse of Surah Bani Israel, the very first verse of Surah Bani Israel, he says that if Rasulullah went spiritually or if he went in his dream, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have not said, Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi. He says that he would say, Subhanallah, asra bi ruhihi. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi. It means that he took his servant, glory be to him. He took his servant, Subhanallah, asra bi abdihi, laylam, when? At the night time. Laylam. Min al Masjid al Haram ila al Masjid al Aqsa al Ladi Barakna Hawlahu. From Masjid al Haram to Masjid al Aqsa, of which the precincts are blessed. Li Nuriyahu min ayatina. Why? So that we can show him our signs. Li Nuriyahu min ayatina. Inna hu huwa Samiul Basir. Allah is the hearing and the seeing. Now, the roots of Mi'raj is in Quran Majid. Two surahs in Quran and Majid speak about Mi'raj. One surah Bani Israel and the other surah is surah Najm. And as far as ahadith are concerned, we have got authentic and reliable traditions of Ahlul Bayt that Mi'raj took place literally, physically. Rasulullah went to the heavens. Thus our eighth holy Imam, Imam Ali ibn Musa al-Ridha sallallahu alayhi says, He says, Man ankara falasata ashya falaysa min shi'atina. He says, whoever denies these three things, he's not from our Shias. The first thing, he says, al-mas'ala fil qabr. Now, is when you recite talqin, shamate paro cho. Je gujri gyo che isamre che. Jarur nati na uthu billah talqin is wajib. The second talqin is mustahab. But the first talqin is wajib when you go inside the qabr. And Imam Iriza says, Whoever denies that the questioning of Nakir and Munkir in the grave is not from us. Man ankara falasata ashia falaysa min shi'atina. The first thing, al-mas'ala fil qabr. The questioning of Nakir and Munkir in qabr. The second thing, al-shafa'a. If you deny and refute shafa'a, intercession. There's nothing, na'udhu billah. There's nothing like intercession. Then, he's not from us. And mi'raj. Imam Ridha says, whoever denies and refutes mi'raj, he is not from us. Now, our fifth holy Imam, Imam Muhammad ibn Ali al Baqir, salawatullahi wa sallam alayhi, <laughs> once he was seen standing near the holy, near the holy Kaaba. While he was standing near the Kaaba, Imam Baqir alayhi salam recites this verse Subhanallah the Asra bi Abdihi. Laylam minal masjid al haram. Imam Bakir alayhi salam takes his index finger, his blessed finger, he points towards Khane Kaaba. Minal masjid al haram, ilal masjid al aqsa. Then he points towards the sky. Ilal masjid al aqsa. Then he completes the verse. There was a passerby there, he was amazed. Perhaps even if we would have been there, we would have been astonished as well. And he says that, Yabna Rasulallah. Why are you pointing? That's right. Min al Masjid al Haram. We agree to that. Then you are pointing towards the sky. Ilal Masjid al Aqsa. So Imam Bakir says, What do you believe? He says, We are Iraqis. We are from Iraq. And we believe that Rasulullah's itinerary of Mi'raj was from Masjid al Haram to Jerusalem. But then you are pointing towards the sky. What does it mean? Imam Bakir said that what you are saying is half of the journey. It is true that Rasulullah from Masjid al-Haram, from the house of Ummehani. Ummehani was the daughter of Hazrat Abu Talib, the sister of Amirul Mu'minin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi salam alayhi. But then the house of Ummehani was attached with Masjid al-Haram. Then from there Rasulullah went to Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, he went to the furthest mosque 
and further as mosque rasul then imam bakir says baina hadha baina hadha wa zaka al haram he says from this and that it's haram meaning further as mosque because here quran says subhanalladhi asra bi abdihi laylan min al masjid al haram ila al masjid al aqsa alladhi barakna hawlahu whose precincts are blessed linuriyahu why did he take them there is a reason linuriyahu min ayatina the reason is there in quran majid so that we can show him our signs which signs rasulullah was shown linuriyahu min ayatina he was shown the wonders of paradise he was shown he, he was shown the chastisement and the fire of hell and the punishment of hell he was shown everything he met his ancestors he met isa alayhi salam he met ibrahim ibrahim is the ancestor of rasulullah and then when he met ibrahim alayhi salam ibrahim welcomed him in the heavens ibrahim said marhaban bi ibn salih he says welcome o my righteous son o my virtuous son o my obedient son he welcomed him he he saw the chastisement and the punishment that people would eat fire those souls they were eating fire there the way quran says fi butunihim nara in surah nisa that there, there are some people when they are they have usurped the wealth of aitam the wealth of orphans what are they thinking they have they are eating fire it is fire in their tummy in their bellies so rasulullah also sees what he witnesses that the souls the people there they are being punished and they are having fire he asks jibril i mean what are they doing jibril i mean says that they are those people in the world they usurp the wealth of aitam rasulullah saw the paradise rasulullah saw a person that he was very happy noor was coming out from his face the rays of noor the rays of light the way we say noor ki shwai and then rasulullah asks that what has he done is he a prophet is he an angel is he a special person jibril amin says yes he is a special person what did he do he says that in 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 dunya in the world this person was an obedient child of his parents one two he was kabutar e masjid what does kabutar e masjid mean it means that he had relation with the mosque which is extremely important that he was any he was so regular and punctual for salatul jamaah that he had a you know we need to have relation with the mosque this is uh, the way we have relation with people we need to have relation with the imam of the time we need to greet the imam of the time before sleeping while we wake up we need to greet him or after salah when we say assalamu alaikum ya sahib al-zaman this is a special relation when we give sadaqa for imam zamana this is we we show that we are we have maintained ties with imam zamana we we have got special relation with imam zamana same applies to the mosque we need to have that relation with the mosque atul asistani says in tawzi and we have said this in the past it's just i'm i'm going through very quickly he says do not eat even with those people do not keep relation with those people who do not have relation with the mosque do not keep even matrimonial affairs relations with them those who don't have relation with the mosque at the end of the day where where are we going to come when we pass away we will, we will be, if whether we like it or not we will be brought to the mosque our salatul mayyat will be recited here our asan our janaza will come out from here so we need to have that relation with mosque rasulullah is being told that ya rasulullah jibril amin says that this person has got a special relation with mosque and that is why you can see noor from his face rasulullah was shown everything he met his ancestors now if you move forward li nuriyahu min ayatina how did he go how did he go now when we say that how did he go in the past the islamic thinkers they were very much influenced with greek philosophers and greek mythology they were influenced with greek mythology the thinkers wrote about mirage in a very different manner they said that this universe is like an onion and the sky is covered with different layers 
with the layers of gold and iron and metal. Thus, if one wants to go to the heavens, he has to pierce the layers of the sky. He has to pierce the layers of the metal and gold and iron. And then another, another thought rose. What was that philosophy? Other thoughts came, other philosophy came. They wrote, uh, it's ridiculous if you read ancient books. Now it's all redundant. It's all useless. But now you don't blame them. Will you blame them? No. Because there was no much knowledge. There was no technology. People did not know about Maharaj. They moved forward and they said that if one wants to go to the heavens, then he has to pierce these layers. And he pierced the layers and he went to the heavens. However, the hole was there. And then another philosophy came. They said that no, the hole was mended. The hole was mended. So they moved forward with different ideologies and different philosophy. But then as we moved forward, as knowledge advanced, people came to know about Me'raj. The haqqaiq of Me'raj. The reality of Me'raj. How did he go? What was the mode of transportation? If you read in ancient books, they said that he traveled uh, with Burak. And Burak was an animal. Yeah, uh, His ears was of a donkey. His height was of a mule. But then, Burak is the superlative degree of Bark. It is excessive formation of light. It is embodiment of light. It is out of comprehension. We cannot understand what Burak is. We cannot understand. It is superlative degree of bark, of light. Allah himself is nur samawate wal ar. Allah is nur. Out of his power, he took his Rasul to the heavens. The way Quran says that, O oh Muhammad, they are asking you about ruh. They won't know what ruh is. Yes, aluna ka ni ruh. Tell them that Ru is Amra Rab. It is the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Just now if somebody passes away, we say he passed away. Now what does it mean? There is no Ru in his body. The way there is no Ru in his body, we cannot explain more. We just say that he passed away. But then people came to Rasulullah and they said that we want to understand. What has happened? What is this Ru? You said that Ru is no more in his body. Allah says that they are not given the knowledge. There is very little knowledge to them. They won't understand. The way we cannot understand Ruh, we cannot understand what Burak is. We just understand that there is light. Through that light, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala carried his prophet. And he went to the heavens. When he went to the heavens, it is said that he witnessed everything. And then when he reached to Sidratul Muntaha, when he reached to a particular place, where now Jibra'il Amin accompanied Rasulullah, he took him everywhere until to, he reached that, that level. That now Jibra'il Amin says that even I am not allowed to come here. I am not permitted. If I reach here, then my feathers will bunt. Thus my wings will bend. So I won't reach here. I won't be able to come forward. On hearing that, Rasulullah proceeded forward. Where Rasulullah proceeded forward? He reached to Sidratul Muntaha. Now again in Surah Najm. Fakana kaaba kawsaini aw adna. In Surah Najm, verse number 9. Quran says that Rasulullah came very close. He came very close to two bows or less than that. The distance of two bows or less than that. Now, Kana Kaaba Kausaini or Adna, somebody asked our sixth Holy Imam, Jafar ibn Muhammad al Sadiq, salawatullahi salamu alayhi. What does it mean? Rasulullah was closer to Jibreel, I mean. Or Rasulullah was closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَكَانَ كَابَ كَوْسَيْنِ أَوْ أَدْنَا In Surah Najm. To whom was he very close? Imam Sadiq says that he was close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now the person who asked did not understand. He was like you and I. He says, I, I can't understand Ibn Rasulullah. He was closer to God. Didn't you say that you cannot see God? What do you mean? Was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seated on the throne? And Rasulullah standing, Imam Sadiq says, no, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cannot be confined to any place. The way we say, Baytullah, Khan-e-Khuda, 
it, does, it doesn't mean that Allah lives there. There is a different meaning when you go to Khane Khuda, to Khane Kaaba. Same applies to this. Imam Sadiq says that you cannot confine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Sidratul Muntaha. You cannot confine Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Arsha Ilahi, to his throne. But when we say that Rasulullah reached to, to that level, he reached to maqam e to the high stage of maqam e to the high stage of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that no one had reached to that maqam, to that position. That he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not with his not with his eyes, with this physical eyes, but he saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the eyes of his heart. With Chashme Basirat, with not Chashme Basarat. The way our fourth holy Imam, Imam Sayyidu Sajidin Zainul Abdin Salawatullah Salam Ali says. That everyone has got two two pairs of eyes. One pair of eye, the other pair of eyes in the heart. When we become pious and when we reach to that level, then we get the chashme basirat. Rasulullah saw Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with chashme basirat, with spiritual eyes, not with these eyes. He reached to that level of maqam e And then Quran says, fa'awha ila abdihi ma awha. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed what it was supposed to be revealed. Now I understand. That when Rasulullah reaches to the plains of Ghadir, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveals, Ya ayyuhar rasul, balir, ma unzila ilayka min rabbik wa in lam taf'al fama ballagta risalata. What does it mean? Look at the tone of the verse. Surah Maida, verse number 67. O Prophet, deliver what you were told before. It means there is a connection of Mi'raj. Ayatullah Dastaghib Shirazi says, that Rasulullah was already told about Wilayat Ali on the night of Mi'raj. But just now, don't say anything. Fa'awha ila abdihi ma awha. Now, when Rasulullah reached very close, then Allah revealed what it was supposed to be revealed. What Allah revealed was Wilayat Ali ibn Abi Talib. Oh, 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 oh. But, O Prophet, do not reveal right now. Do not deliver right now until we command to you. And it was commanded in the plains of Ghadir. Ya ayyuhar rasul, ballik. Now you deliver the message, what you were told initially on the night of Mi'raj. And we all know that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke also, he spoke with the accent of Amirul Mu'minin. Ayatullah Dastaghib Shirazi writes that do you know why? Because Imam Rasulullah loved Ali so much. And Allah says, because you have so much love for Ali ibn Abi Talib, that is why I decided to choose the accent of Amirul Mu'minin. He spoke with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spoke with the accent of Amirul Mu'minin, Ali ibn Abi Talib, salawatullahi wa salamu alayhi. Kehte hai ke jab Rasulullah wapas aay dusre din, jab Rasulullah pohnchte hai masjid mein subah, jab namudar hui, meiraj ka pura safar, تے ہو گیا ختم ہو گیا اب رسول اللہ مسجد میں پہنچتے ہیں تو رسول اللہ نے پورے سفر کا بیان کیا کہ ہم کیسے پہنچے ہم کس طریقے سے گئے تو لوگوں کو تعجب ہوا رسول اللہ نے باقاعدہ بیان کیا کہ میں نے نماز پڑھائی سب انبیاء میرے پیچھے سب انبیاء نے میرے پیچھے نماز پڑھی میں نے نماز جماعت کو اقامہ کیا رسول نے فرمایا سب کچھ رسول اللہ نے سب کچھ بیان کیا اس وقت لوگوں کو تعجب ہوا پھر حضور نے فرمایا کہ جب میں واپس آنا چاہتا تھا تو ندائے غیبی آئی السلام علیکہ ایوہ النبی ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ یعنی خدا وند کریم کی طرف سے سلام تھا رسول پر السلام علیکہ ایوہ النبی ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ اس طرف سے فرشتوں نے کہا السلام علینا وعلا عباد اللہ الصالحین ہمارے اوپر سلام اور سب عباد اللہ الصالحین پر سلام اور رسول اللہ نے فرمایا السلام علیکم ورحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ خدا وند کریم کو اتنا پسند آیا کہ یہ تین سلام خدا نے واجب قرار دیا ہے سلام اور اس کے اوپر خدا بدر جاولا خدا وند کریم کو رسول کی سلام پسند آیا رسول کا سلام پسند آیا کہ رسول کا جو تیسرا سلام ہے وہ واجب قرار دیا ہے کہ اگر وقت بھی نہ ہو یہ تیسرا سلام واجب ہے السلام علیکم 
رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ اب پتا چلا ہم تو میراج میں نہیں جا سکتے رسول اللہ میراج کی طرف گئے لیکن رسول کیا فرماتے ہیں السلاة میراج المؤمن نتیجہ یہ ہے آج کی اس تقریر کی نتیجہ ہے کہ السلاة میراج المؤمن اگر ہم میراج میں جانا چاہتے ہیں تو ہماری میراج صلاة ہے انما المؤمنون قد افلح المؤمنون الذین ہم فی صلاتہم خاشعون مومنین در حقیقت کامیاب ہے جو اپنے نماز میں گھر فکر کرتے ہیں خشو کے ساتھ نماز پڑھتے ہیں ہمبل ہے وہ توجہ کرتے ہیں اپنے نماز پر قد افلح المومنون الذین ہم فی صلاتہم خاشعون ایسا نہیں ہے کہ ہم نماز پڑھتے ہیں اور پھر شوپنگ کی لسٹ بھی بناتے ہیں کہ آلدی میں یہ خریدنا چاہتا ہے یہاں سے نکل کر لیڈل جائیں گے یہ کام بھی کرنا ہے فون بھی کرنا ہے گھر پہ نہیں در حقیقت صلاة مومن کی معراج ہے آئیں ہم سب مل کے خدا وند کریم کے پاس دعا کریں کہ پالنے والے سال آیندہ شب معراج تو نصیب کر کہ ہم رسول اللہ کی زیارت کریں مدینہ منورہ میں جو حج و زیارت کے متمنی ہیں خدایا ان کو تو حج و زیارت سے مشرف فرما خدایا ہمارے مرہومین کے اوپر رحمتوں کی بارش اتا کر پالنے والے جو بے اولاد ہیں ان کو تو اولاد صالح عطا کر جو مکروز ہیں ان کا قرض غیب سے ادا کرنا جو مریض ہیں ان کو لباس آفیت پہنا ہمارے علماء کرام کو طول عمر عطا فرما رسول کا آخری جانشین جو پرد غیب میں ہے ان کی ظہور میں تو چاجیل فرما ان کی ظہور میں تو آسانی فرما افضل السلام بر محمد و آل محمد الہی ببیمہ